camcast back with another video here. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a stage three bucketed DIY setup. Um, well, it's not really DIY, because I purchased this kit from Precision Raceworks, but this is pretty much the only DIY stage three kit you can get, and you can't really beat the price or the quality. We removed the fuel bucket. I definitely think this is the best bang for your buck. If you wanna stay with a bucketed fuel system, there's lots of guys that are doing bucketless fuel systems, which is great, but I definitely don't like the idea of running out of gas at a quarter tank. These things guzzle fuel. You might wanna go on a road trip. Generally speaking, this bucket's gonna sit at the bottom of your fuel tank and the fuel level might be down to here, but the Venturi system is gonna siphon fuel from either side of the tank. And there's two hoses that are gonna keep dumping fuel into this bucket, keeping it full so that you always have a good amount of fuel. We're gonna be keeping our factory Venturi system. We're gonna be running dual Walbro 450s. Um, one of the pumps is gonna run off the OEM wiring. And then our second pump, we're gonna wire in with a hob switch, but we'll get into that later once we get this bucket all disassembled and assembled. We're gonna pull this guy off. We're gonna have our fuel level um, sensor connector and our fuel pump connector. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these. Next, we're gonna remove this fuel level sending unit. At this point, you have your bucket removed. Um, I'm gonna be using a heat gun to break some of this glue loose. But before I do that, I'm gonna rinse this out with water because I don't want this to catch on fire. There we go. We are going to snip these wires. There, boom. We're gonna hold on to this because we're gonna be using this for one of the fuel pumps. Removing these three portions of the bucket. Okay. We're just gonna remove that, cut it out, gonna give us a little more room to work here. Well, that one just popped off. I just kind of pried under it. Popped off pretty easy. Let's see if we can get this one here. I just kind of... In this bracket, there's gonna be some little tabs and these tabs do not come bent, so I've bent them outwards as you're supposed to. So when you set it on the bucket, it sits on it just like that. A little flashlight here, I'll put it in the bucket. When I put it in the bucket, you guys can see that you can see where the holes are for the bracket. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drill three holes in the bucket. Jesus. And boom, just like that, we have some perfect fitting clips. We, uh, we have the bucket ready to go. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to remove our Venturi fitting from our fuel pump. Yeah, that is garbage and dirty, disgusting. And then this guy should just pull out just like that. This is going to go right here on the Venturi fitting on that guy. So we're gonna heat this tube up, we're gonna pop it over there, and then there's this little squeeze clamp that we are going to also jam on there. Squeeze. And now what we have to do is we have to drill a few small holes just to zip tie our Venturi to the bottom of the fuel bucket because you can see there's a little flapper there that works in conjunction with our Venturi valve. And my Venturi is sitting in there. Basically what we want to do is we want to get a zip tie around the main nipple and a zip tie around the smaller nipple down here. Our Venturi is zip tied in, really simple. Um, just drilled those holes just big enough so that I could fit two zip ties through. Snugged them up, this guy's secure, tight, he's not going anywhere. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble our fuel fitting. So you're gonna wanna orientate this in the correct way. So 
I've got this going down there. This is gonna sit on top, so like that. And then before we put this on though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of our fuel pumps now, make sure that we have the O-rings on them and we're gonna set them in this. And then this bracket is gonna go on top of that. At this point, guys, you're gonna wanna blow out all your fittings, make sure everything is nice and clean. Okay, so I'm kind of leaving this. It's all just bolted down now. I'm gonna go around the edges and really make sure where your fuel pumps are going into this fitting, that those O-rings aren't rolled or sticking out because that would cause a whole big can of worm problem that you do not want. And we are just going to zip tie these pumps to our bracket. So now that our fuel pumps are zip tied in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our fuel socks and then we are going to set this into the bucket. We're going to attach our bracket to the bucket and then we're gonna get started on our wiring, our nylon grommets that come with the kit. Take this guy, jam him in there. Wire strippers, we're gonna give these a quick stripping. These were definitely a tight squeeze. And this guy is going to drop into here, I suppose. Definitely a bit of a tight squeeze. At this point, I am going to line up my holes, insert my push holes. So I'll give you guys the lowdown here. Um, I just took these butt connectors. I connected my factory fuel pump pigtail that I snipped off earlier to one of the fuel pumps. I kind of did some jank build zip tie special here <laughs> just because I'm a little paranoid of these wires touching. So just to be safe, I went ahead and did that. And I also did it to this side. So this is the side that's gonna go to the bottom of your top hat. We're gonna mount some power studs. So I'm gonna show you guys in a minute here. I will drill some holes in this, mount some studs. And then I also went ahead and jammed my fuel level sending unit in here. And it was a tight squeeze. This was all a really tight squeeze. We're going to be cutting these tabs off of the top hat because they're gonna interfere with our fuel pump. Jesus! Well, that worked perfectly, actually. I don't think I could have got it any better than that. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this one now, too. <laughs> and boom, just like that, that should be just fine. Whoa. Speedy. What's gonna happen is when you install your additional wiring harness, there's two nuts that are gonna screw on top of there. And that is what your power cables for your secondary fuel pump will go. Now we're gonna connect our fuel sender and our OEM fuel pump back to the wiring. You're gonna wanna make sure you get those guys in the proper spots. I don't think they're labeled. My red marker, just gonna mark this guy with red. We're gonna stuff this fuel pump in now. I'm gonna try to get as much lighting as I can in this hard to light spot. So this is how we got it set up. We're gonna drop it in. We're gonna zip tie some fuel lines in. I'm gonna take this off for the time being and try not to get too angry while. <laughs> <laughs> We zip tied both of our fuel lines on individually. What we did was we lifted the bucket up, kind of threaded the zip ties through. I locked them and then I 
I looped the zip ties so they were just on the first few locks and then I put the tubes in and uh, got them in. It was definitely um, required a little bit of patience. We were able to get this fuel pump in. Um, I needed Michael's help while we were doing it. We pushed our fuel pump all the way down. Really make sure you have it all the way down. This lock ring should kind of just thread on by hand. And then we just finished tightening it up and wire up the fuel pump wiring, which I'll show you guys how to do. I kind of have a cool different way of doing that that'll make it a little cleaner and a lot easier. So as for the wiring harness on our secondary fuel pump, it's gonna be a really simple install. We're gonna have this harness here, which is gonna be for our hob switch, which is basically gonna be a pressure switch that's gonna activate our secondary pump. We're gonna have this relay, which is gonna be going directly to our battery. And then this harness is gonna go to our fuel pump and plug into our relay harness. And that's gonna plug into our hob switch harness. And I'll show you guys how to wire all that up. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my battery terminals. I'm just going to connect my relay power and ground cables to these batteries. And then I'm gonna tie the harness up in here and I'll show you guys how it all works. You guys can see, I took the relay harness right here. I hooked the red up to the power cable here. Um, you could really hook it up to anyone. I chose to hook it up to this one. You can see we got the fuse down here. So now I just mounted the relay to the one of the taillight bolts. Instead of running our hob switch on the charge pipe or the intake manifold, we're actually gonna run it back here. Um, if we go to the driver's side, and you remove this cover. This is basically a solenoid, an electric over air solenoid that controls a valve on your driver's side muffler that actually opens at a certain RPM. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna take both of these vacuum lines off. I've already pulled this kind of out from down there. Okay, I'm gonna fish those guys out. If you guys are wondering, you're gonna want the vacuum line on the bottom of the valve. So the shorter one we're gonna use uh, this other one doesn't really matter. It just goes to the muffler. This short one, what we're going to do is this actually isn't a boost source, but if we go to the front of the car, I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do to make this so that it is a boost source so that we can put our hob switch back here. But anyways, we're going to run this line that goes to the exhaust solenoid to our intake manifold nipple, which is what I have the blue line for my blow-off valve going to right there. Um, we're actually going to remove that and we're going to be tapping into a different line. We're going to be tapping into this fitting here off the throttle body with a special fitting I bought for the blow-off valve because the line on the intake manifold is not actually big enough for the blow-off valve. So as I said, we're going to remove this. We're going to put this line that goes to our muffler solenoid. On the intake manifold, we're gonna switch it from vacuum to intake pressure, charge pressure, and then we're gonna get a special adapter for the blow-off valve, and that is gonna give us um, boost pressure to our trunk. I'm just removing this trim piece so I can run our hob switch wiring through these panels back here, down to here, and then plug my power and my ground in. Those are tight. I also cut a hole in the grommet and fed the wire through. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this connector from over there to here and plug it in under here and we'll be good to go. Pop clips, T40, use some force to pull it out. Run the wire all the way through here. And boom, we're plugged in. So now I'm gonna tie it all up. There's all the fuel pump wiring all tied up. All neat, same as the hob switch. Sturdy, not going anywhere. And that's how you wire in your secondary fuel.